Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with an everyday carry EDC fountain pen video of my work fountain pens. So these are the pens which I currently use at work in my trusty pen roll. So let's open this up. It's been a while since I did one of these and as you can see, you know, we're getting more and more ink onto my pen roll. And you can see some of the fountain pens which I am using. I'll get them out one at a time and do a bit of a writing sample with each one of these and let you know my thoughts. I will point out that if you haven't seen a review of any of these fountain pens on my channel there will be one coming up because these are definite everyday carry fountain pens so if you're interested in EDC fountain pens at work or just you know fountain pens relatively inexpensive cheap fountain pens too then please subscribe and turn on all notifications so that you uh, don't miss out on those reviews of these pens and others I have a whole load of pens which I'm going to review at some point soon so I have got my moleskin book which is yeah I, I I'm not a fan of moleskin paper at all and I will be um, writing with each one of these fountain pens in turn. So we'll go from, in no particular order, left from right. I shall just check the date. I believe it's the 16th of January. Twenty twenty one. There we go. Into the new year already. So first off, what have we got? Well it's a Lamy Ion and I bought this pen second hand. It was one of these things on eBay that I just happened to see. It was a good price, happened to win the auction, and never really thought a lot about it. And I thought, you know what, it's probably going to be quite a nice pen to use at work. This is the, I think it's called Olive Silver. Uh, there are other versions. I have reviewed the uh, black version of the Lamy, Lamy Ion. And I took this pen to work because I thought, well, you know what, I'm probably not going to write with it at home very much. And wow, I really, really love this pen. It's this sort of brushed aluminium, which... It feels a little bit a little bit rough to the fingertips so if you're not a fan of terracotta feeling things if you know what I mean this is going to set your teeth on edge so yeah avoid, avoid it if that is something which bothers you and you can see the Lamy logo on the clip there and one thing that I never realized about the Lamy ion is this and this is something that I really appreciate this is a design feature carried across from the uh, Lamy 2000 and this is the fact that the clip is sprung you press the uh, back end or top end and it opens up I mean as it happens the clip slides on and off things really nicely anyway it's a nicely sprung clip not too tight not too slack but I really like that design feature and for me this is this is like a metal Lamy 2000 which is a good thing it is a bit girthier the pen the cap rather pops off and we have this similarly brushed aluminium section which is a little bit on the fat or bulbous side and rather strangely it's 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 different to the barrel and the cap if I put all three side by side you'll you, you sort of be able to see what I mean. It's 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 not quite the same. It is metal, I believe, um, and of course this is a typical Lamy fountain pen, in being that it takes Lamy proprietary cartridges and the uh, converters, and it has a steel nib. Now the nib itself is it's. It's a Lamy style winged nib with a black plastic feed underneath. 
um, but it, it, everything about the nib on the ion is slightly rounded, so it almost matches the uh, the barrel and everything uh, with the pen. So let's do a little bit of a writing sample. Lamy, Lamy, Ion, A I O N, Olive Silver. And this nib is, I um, just double check, see if I can see that. Yeah, I'm pretty certain that this is an extra fine. Now, Lamy nibs are something which I have talked about a lot in the past in my previous videos. It's just a Lamy blue cartridge that I keep putting into this pen. And this extra fine nib is really extra fine but it lays down ink really well and it's it's not overly wet but it's pretty wet for an extra fine and all I can say is wow I'm sold on this nib um, it's it's got plenty of feedback there is a lot of feedback I know it's an extra fine nib which is why you're going to get more feedback so you've got not necessarily scratchiness but there is feedback um, but it's smooth, it's a really, really nice pen to write with, even on really rubbish paper, and worse than this, even uh, even worse than this moleskin paper, so the paper that comes out of the uh, printer at work, it writes really well on there, so I'm very, very impressed with this Lamy Ion with the extra fine nib, really, really nice pen. Next pen is... A trusty Lamy Safari. I always need a green pen at work and this has been in my everyday carry at work since I started my new job way back in July uh, 2020. So keep refilling the ink cartridge that's in here. Once again it's a Lamy proprietary ink cartridge in the Lamy Safari. This has got medium nib, which in all honesty writes really, really well. I'm very happy with the way that this particular Lamy medium nib writes, so no uh, no issues there. The ink, I went for a bulletproof Noodler's ink. So this is Noodler's Bad Green Gate, or... That was me, not the pen. Um... I will actually, just before I forget, add that this is my everyday carry work fencing pen. Oops, work. Trying to write over the camera. F. P's. There we go. Just make that note for future reference. And I like it. It's This ink it dries pretty quickly on bad paper. And it, you know, it is it is bulletproof. I can use a highlighter over the top of it. And it's a really, really nice green. Um, and every time I consider changing out, well, the pen, keep the ink, use that in a different pen. And I keep going back to the Lamy uh, Safari <laughs> because it's, it, it's convenient. It's robust. It's the sort of pen that I can just... If the, uh, the boss drags me into his office to have a meeting about something... I can just literally pick this up, clip it onto my lanyard or notepad. If I drop it on the floor, it rolls off. I know it's not going to break. So, you know, this is this is a good, good fountain pen for use at work. I know it's not the most attractive-looking or certainly business-like fountain pen, but I like it. It's practical, and that's what I am. So, there is that one. The next one, now this is my true everyday carry fountain pen, the Karis Customs Fountain Pen K. And this is the, um, I think this is the raw aluminium finish. And I think this is a brilliant, robust fountain pen. In fact, you know what, I think this is one of those pens that even if it got scuffed up, I think it would look even better because it is such a such a meaty fountain pen it's not massively heavy nice aluminium fountain pen 
interestingly, this section started off the same colour as the barrel and the cap, which has gone this sort of gunmetal colour. But with all this plaguey stuff being around at the moment, because this is an everyday carry, I took this out onto the uh, shop floor doing some note taking got back into the uh, office and thought you know what I'm gonna make sure that everything is sanitized so I got some sanitizing wipes cleaned the barrel and the cap of the pen like this wiped it all over no problem got to the section wiped it and the color came off so it's left me with this um, <laughs> this light aluminium color which is a bit strange Anyway, I'm still not bothered about that, happy enough. Caris Customs, this is going to burp because I've just filled this up this morning um, with ink because I just keep refilling this fountain pen. And the ink is another bulletproof ink. I really like these at work which is going to burp everywhere noodlers uh, heart of darkness which in my opinion is a really excellent black ink it's very very black and it, it is bulletproof and it does a good job in the office and that's all I can ask. I have experience and I don't know whether it's because of the heavy pigmentation in this noodle is heart of darkness ink. I have experienced the odd sort of thing with this particular uh, Karas Customs K fountain pen where the ink flow isn't very good. Um, I'll try and demonstrate it. It's probably not the best paper to try it, but no pressure whatsoever, and you get this reasonably fine line. But sometimes it just it seems a little bit dry. So you press down on the nib, and you get to squeeze out more ink. So it's actually really, really um, interesting nib to use on these uh, Karis fountain pens, Karis Customs fountain pens. So that's that one. This next one, now this was a surprise. This was in my everyday carry at home fountain pen um, rotation. And this is the Namisu Nova aluminium in red. And I wasn't really using it a lot at home. I wanted a different red pen with a different red ink. And I wasn't really in love with the, um, with the ink in this for a while. But I've been using it at work and this pen and ink will end up in a ink review and a subsequent ink review in another pen after that because I've really grown to love this ink. Um, I'll show you in a minute. So this is the Namisu um, Nova. Namisu Nova Aluminium Red. Unscrews. I don't, I don't remember when I bought this. It may have been one of the prototypes that was on sale or it may have been a new one but I've noticed that some of the red anodization is missing from around the threads but I find this a very satisfying pen to uh, to cap. It just seems to, it's just well made, everything just seems to slip into place really really easily and quickly. So here we go. I don't know how well this is going to show up Namisu Nova Red with fine nib, fine steel nib. And this ink, it's not bulletproof by the way. Noodler's Dragon's Napalm. Now this is not the paper to do this ink justice. It's hard to describe, but on white paper, this ink is it's, it's, it's a difficult colour to describe. I think I, on the outside of it, you would say, yes, it is a red ink. But when you start to look at it more closely, you think, actually, there's a bit of pink in there, there's a bit of orange. And when you clean it, there's this wonderful 
I'd say it's it's like a very pale fluorescent green pigment inside the ink as well. And I'm really looking forward to uh, trying this Dragon's Napalm in another fountain pen with a broad nib, just to see what uh, what it really is capable of. Because this uh, bottle of Noodler's Dragon's Napalm was purchased uh, as a Christmas gift, uh, 20, um, 2019, 2019 Christmas gift from my wife, and she also bought me a, bought me a hand-turned fountain pen in wood with quite possibly one of the worst nibs ever. Um, and it's, because, it's a difficult pen to love as much as I really do want to love it, and I think I may have to either swap out the nib or do something, because I would like to use that pen. And I used this Noodler's Dragon's Napalm ink in that pen, and it was just awful. And when I put it into this pen, I wasn't really thinking too much of it. I just thought, oh, I'll just, oh it's a fine nib. It, 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 it will do. It, it serves a purpose. And I've really, really started to really appreciate this ink and certainly in this pen, so very nice pen and ink combination there. The next pen, I will hold this one further up the barrel than I would do normally, not on the section, because I know that uh, this has leaked ink into the cap. <laughs> uh, this, of course, is a black Schaefer No Nonsense with a medium nib. So I shall unscrew that. And five... lovely writer using a Schaefer proprietary cartridge uh, which I have refilled cleaned and refilled with Noodler's Prime of the Commons is this Prime of the Commons I just have to rethink this yeah I'm fairly certain Prime of the Commons which is a nice dark teal blue so very nice there we go there's the ink all over the shop right. I have to be careful not to get this anywhere else so Noodler's Prime of the Commons once again another bulletproof ink um, besides a red pen I always like to have an orange pen or orange ink available and this of course is the Keiko Retro in orange with this ball clip on the wire which I actually like as a design feature it's incredibly tight really tight and uncapping and capping is a little bit weird I find holding this particular pen awkward it just seems that little bit too girthy which is a strange thing because I know that sometimes like the Lamy Ion is quite a girthy fountain pen to hold for me. I don't know, it just feels girthy in the section. This is obviously nowhere near as girthy, but it feels quite, I don't know, it's, it's, I think the best way of describing it is it, it feels cumbersome to hold. It feels a little bit too girthy, and especially down for this hooded, um, medium nib which is a little bit medium towards fine and I find getting the right angle with this fountain pen tricky this one has a medium nib and this is Diamine Sunset And I really love that orange ink. I like this ink window, even though it's not hugely practical. If it is really empty, then you know you can see where the ink level is. And it's getting pretty low. I'm in the converter, in fact. <laughs> Good job I did that because I am actually out of ink. So that's something that I shall be uh, shall be doing shortly. And. Two more pens to go. Faber Castell Fresh.
this is the black version medium nib which writes a little bit fine but faber castell nibs do do that so faber castell fresh and this is just a black cartridge and these are excellent writers they are not the prettiest fountain pens but they are really really good writers very very pleased with how these um, Faber Castell fresh fountain pens perform and the next one is one which I have recorded a video of which shall be released shortly and this is an unusual fountain pen another cheap German fountain pen same as the Faber Castell fresh this is the Schneider Ray in the grey finish oops bit of a skip there hard start doesn't normally do that Schneider Ray grey and black there are other colours available with an incredibly broad medium nib and this one is just a blue cartridge so very very broad wet nib on these fountain pens so there we have it those are the eight pens which i have currently inked up in use at work so thank you very much for watching hope you found it interesting and i shall see you next time bye